All right, awesome. So <laughs> thank you, Mr. Dutton. Thank you. Um, so we're recording, um, going back to Nearpod now. Maybe. Oh, I do want to type. All right, so we are starting, ladies and gentlemen, uh, chapter five, our final chapter. This is the last chapter in ESS. Woohoo! Woo we should see some dancing. <laughs> Not enough of you guys are dancing. I'm sad now. Okay, um, so I am curious what different types of soil you guys can think of. Any other words for soil other than soil you can think of? How do I get my chat box back? There we go. All right, some, yes, dirt. So what are some other things in dirt or words for dirt? Soil. Yep, we got soil, we got dirt. What else is in there? Earth, good, another word. Organic materials. Yep, there's, yes, organic materials is one of the big ones we're gonna talk about today. The crust of the earth is, is um, one of the things we are gonna be looking at. Um, what about really sticky soil? Can be gray sometimes. Good, mud, clay. Clay is one of the ones we're gonna talk about. And then what about uh, if you go up to Edgewater? What is the, what's the earth made out of there? Yep, sand. Okay, good. This is good. Um, there is one more type I, that we are gonna talk about. I am curious, does anyone know, what do we call the dirt at the bottom of like a river or stream? Well, that's a question I want you all to be able to answer by the end of class. That's fine. All right, so, um, so uh, granite is a uh, rock, which we will, we will talk about rocks, um, but that's not what we would expect to find at the bottom of a stream. It's not the type of soil that we would find at least. Okay, so, so this, uh, so that's sort of an overview of, of chapter five, this first section, there are three. Uh, the first section is just an introduction to soil systems. Um, there are many types of soil, clay, uh, sand are the big two that you noted. At the bottom right, you see the word silt. Silt is the type of soil that you find at the bottom of streams and rivers and things like that. Um, and for the sake of time, we're gonna, we're gonna keep rolling. I know this is strange, but I wanted to see if you guys can use your knowledge of prefixes to do um, to do a quick matching game. There are four choices here. Um, so jump on. To, I got four of you on the Nearpod already. For the for the other eight of you, if you guys can jump on the Nearpod and just try this, take about thirty seconds is all you need. See if you can match these four terms just by looking at prefixes. And again, excellent. Thank you guys for joining Nearpod. If you're still just joining Nearpod, or if you're still trying to, if you're just showing up, uh, the Nearpod code is in the Google. Oh, sorry. The Zoom group chat. Guys, settle down. Shh. 
All right. Excellent work. Thank you for joining us. So the prefixes that you see, right? The, uh, for, we take a step back, right? We're going to be talking about soil, um, which we have a name for, the soil systems of the planet. Um, the other, we, we divide the planet or everything that we know that can, we consider Earth and the system of Earth. There are four spheres. The hydrosphere, which hopefully you guys can guess, is, the, is water. The atmosphere, which I know you guys know from uh, our chapter on it, right, is all of the gases that surround the planet. The biosphere, which is anything on the planet that we consider alive. And then finally, the lithosphere. So the lithosphere is um, the soil systems of our planet. And those four spheres do have what we call um, and the, the pedosphere is sort of the overlap of all of them. So we're living things and soil and air and water are all interacting and coming together. And so we are going to talk um, for the next couple weeks about the lithosphere in particular, but certainly how it overlaps and interacts with the other three spheres. And of course, there is one issue that we need to be aware of. Can anyone just identify what's the difference between this picture and the last picture? What have we added? Or in other words, what the heck does anthroposphere mean? Mr. Dutton is trying to give you a clue. Thank you. It is human. So uh, the way that ha humans use this and interact with the, the pedosphere, right? Uh, oftentimes for profit. We're using it for some sort of gain, and then we are also leaving some sort of impact. All right, excellent. Um, so what is soil, right? What is dirt? This is uh, a question that seems obvious, um, but is more complex than just a quick Oh, it's the brown stuff that I get on my shoes or in my on my hands when I try to, you know, play with worms. Um, but so dirt or soil is a complex ecosystem, just like you think of a pond, right? And we can talk about all of the different uh, biodiversity in the pond. Um, soil itself is an ecosystem, uh, which means it has those four big things we associate with any system. It has storages. It has inputs and outputs, and within it, it has transformations. So make sure that by the end of this class, you feel comfortable with each of those. Um, some examples of storages. Um, I, oh man, I believe it was Mizan. I know someone talked about organic material, right, at the beginning in the warm-up. So organic material is one of the things that we find in soil. Um, minerals, uh, someone mentioned granite right, and rock particles. So there is, um, as you can see in the picture, right, there are large chunks of material, anything, um, right, that isn't sort of particulate, right, anything that's a big solid chunk we would generally consider some form of rock. And there's a variety of those, and you can take an entire class on types of rock in college. Um, anyone know what that class is called? I know we're not very talkative first thing in the morning. It's hard. Study of rocks. Well, I'm going to leave you guys to Google that. Um, yes, yes, it is rock class. That is what they call it. Um, <laughs> I love it, Gabe. So, um, organic material uh, can, and you may already be aware of this, but uh, can be living or dead. Um, organic material that is no longer alive we call humus or um, I don't call it hummus because I like to eat hummus and I don't like to eat humus so I always call it humus 
Um, humus is literally decomposed plants and animals. Um, and that doesn't mean rotting corpses. Uh, I mean, those are included in it, but technically humus is, nor is broken down further so that you, you can't see what it is. It looks like dirt. Um, and, well, it is dirt, sorry. Um, there are gases and liquids that dissolve into the pores, right? And these are storages. So there is gas and there's liquid in this picture. Um, I believe you guys can see my mouse. So um, <clears throat> what are the two main gases <clears throat> in soil? Hint, what are the two main gases in the atmosphere? And I didn't want to think this early. I haven't had coffee. Life is hard. Oh, can I have some coffee? 72, no, sorry, 78% of the atmosphere and 21% of the atmosphere are. Is that the element that starts with N? There we go. Thank you, Mr. Dutton. Thank you, Arden, for the simultaneous tie. Nitrogen and oxygen. There we go. Ms. Begley coming through. Thank you. You all owe her a Coke. Um, so nitrogen and oxygen, same two in the soil, right? Um, and of course, what is the main liquid we find in the soil? Please God, know this, guys. Because if you can't figure this one out, I'm, I'm going to have to quit teaching. What's the blue stuff in this diagram? It's a liquid. Okay, I quit. I'm leaving. Bye. Oh, okay, fine. Gabe, Gabe saved you all. Ah, it is water. Thank you, Acube. <laughs> Ayub, thank you, Dave. <laughs> all right, so um, guys, the main liquid we find dissolved in soil or in these pores is water. The main gases are nitrogen and oxygen. No big surprises there. We already knew that stuff from the atmosphere. So um, a profile, uh, you guys may be aware of the term profile pic, but literally a profile picture means a side view. So I put a profile picture. This is literally what a profile is of a human being. Um, it's literally a side view with, you know, a sort of top to bottom uh, uh, portrayal. This is a soil profile. And uh, as you guys figured out with the, our discussion of the word horizon, there are different horizons in it. So um, there is the O, A, B, C, and R. If I told you there were three big ones, there are the three main soil horizons, what do you think the main three soil horizons are of those five? I agree, Mr. Dutton is definitely living it up right now. What do you think the big three are, ladies and gentlemen? Don't overthink this. There's the O, there's the A, B, and C, and there's the R. What do you think the main three you wanna know about are? or the big three, the first three we discussed as we started to study the soil as humans. Oh, Jeremiah, you got two out of three, which is not bad. That's passing. Um, the O or the organic layer or the humus layer is really important. Um, but it's a little bit of a lie. It's not, in my mind, it's not really soil soil. Like when I think of soil, when I think of dirt, I'm thinking of the crumbly brown stuff. The O layer is literally the, the sort of living and uh, immediately dead layer, uh, like leaf litter on the very top. The main three layers in the soil that we do, you need to be aware of are the A, B, and C layer. So I do want you to be able to differentiate between A, B, and C. Um, of course, the O layer and the R layer are important, R being uh, the bedrock or the source material for new dirt from the bottom, and then the source material for new dirt at the top being the O layer. So can you spotlight my video real quick? Ooh, yes. Uh, if I double, no, oh, that doesn't work. Okay. Three dots in my camera? Yeah, but I have to exit screen share first. Oh, sorry. No, no, it's okay. okay. No, I got it. I got it. Uh, yeah. No. No. <laughs> uh, but, so okay. I, I think, well, I've double clicked on it, but if I share screen, you go away. All right. 
Well, guys, so, if you double click on Mr. Dutton right now, you should be able to see his screen. So I am showing some a uh, soil, soil profile from my yard, and whoa, oh, a bee just visited me too. Um, and so what you can see here is this where the where the grass is. All right, I dug up some some lawn, and I'm going to put it back. Otherwise, my wife is going to get uh, kind of mad at me. But I have dug up um, this layer, and so what we see here is the O layer. The O layer is very thin. Okay, it's just this top layer here that is where the grass penetrates, where the um, the actual plants have uh, the the most layer of their roots and where they're getting their nutrients from. That's that organic layer. Uh, down below that is the A layer, which is the topsoil. And in fact, uh, this topsoil you can see is is really really good topsoil. Um, I don't, maybe I should garden more on this side of things, but I don't know. Oh, and then embedded in topsoil, sometimes you have things like apparently glass. Uh, but this, this is the A layer, and the A layer is almost this entire thing, all right? The O is only that little top part here. Um, and so if we go back down into the hole, uh, uh, see, clay soil wormies all right and we see wormies in the uh, uh, the a layer and I could even dig down further and mr. Dutton you're starting to break up soil mr. Dutton can you hear me yes I can Okay. You kind of broke up a little bit there. Your audio did. Nope. Oh, yep. I'm getting further and further away from my house. So further from my Wi-Fi. <laughs> All right. Um, can I, can I hide you now? Yes, sir. Okay. So we're going to go back to taking a look at this profile in diagram. So you guys saw that top, right? That O horizon is in the range of zero to two inches thick, but very, very thin, right? Just Mr. Dutton just showed it to you. And then he dug down through the A layer and showed you really this sort of top, generally like six to 10 inches, right? And that's where a lot of our early root systems, right, of young plants are. They're just digging down into that A layer. Um, it's uh, very rich in organic material, um, generally pretty dark in color, as you saw. Uh, it's also called the zone of leaching. That's another key term we want you to get uh, from today. So A horizon is considered topsoil. Sub literally means below. So the subsoil generally refers to the B horizon. Now, technically, the C horizon is subsoil to the B horizon. So don't overthink this. But um, normally when we're talking about subsoil, our frame of reference as humans is we're standing on top of the O horizon. So the A horizon is that topsoil that we are, uh, we need to keep that rich and organic for our plants, for our agriculture. And then the B horizon is the subsoil, the soil below that. We very rarely dig down to get to the C horizon in our everyday life or even in our agricultural life. Because um, you have to dig down over 30 inches, or if you do some quick math, uh, a, a little over three feet to get down to the C horizon. So uh, the subsoil and B horizon is where things accumulate. <clears throat> um, oftentimes a lot of nutrients can accumulate if they're being leached away. So nutrients can be leached away uh, from the A horizon into the, and accumulate in the B horizon. <clears throat> That's why a lot of older plants, and if you take a look at the picture, a lot of older plants, their roots will extend down well into the B horizon to capitalize on the nutrients that are accumulating there. Um, there are oftentimes a lot of other things and larger rocks in the B horizon, but what we really note is in the C, C horizon, there is a, a fairly large quantity of large rocks. Um, so there is a weathered bedrock. It's no longer a giant slab of, of granite, but chunks of granite or, or you know, small pieces, the size anywhere from, uh, you know, I think, imagine like a baseball to a basketball sized rocks are down that way. 
Um, and of course, smaller and bigger, but those are like I think what I think of as the sea horizon. And then once you get to the bottom of the sea horizon, and that really can be um, a wide range of depths, but there is bedrock at the bottom. Awesome. I don't know if you guys can see Mr. Dutton's picture, um, but Mr. Dutton is showing you, let me exit. Um, if you see Mr. Dutton's picture, he's showing you some examples of, um, of larger rocks, right, that are typically going to be found in the sea horizon, um, but do work their way up, right? Um, okay, so how are we doing on time? I know we've, we've been going very slowly, but um, it is worth noting that in any system, right, there's transformations and translocations. Um, and so think of, and this is, this is I think, why, why I chose this picture, right, is uh, this is the human circulatory system. Right? It's pretty easy for us to imagine things like nutrients and oxygen and whatnot flowing through our body, but there are flows or translocations in soil. These, this obviously happens more slowly than uh, in the human body, but the translocation of materials is just sort of the movement around it. Um, there are nu nutrients being cycled by the biosphere or living organisms in the soil. And a lot of times they are actually transforming the materials. So uh, nitrates are a big one. They are constantly being absorbed by plant roots. Um, they're potentially being broken down by legumes or other mi microorganisms. Um, I am curious, um, can you think of an or so? For, oh wait, wait, so first of all, what is an input? How do we get new soil? And I did cover this on the last couple slides. Where is new soil coming from? And you can look at the diagram for help. Please do, because I don't want to spend five minutes figuring out this input. Oh, my heart. You guys are, you guys are hurting me. Yay. One input could be leaf litter. Perfect. Inorganic material. Uh, I, yeah, if you're coming from the bedrock, we're talking about bedrock becoming weathered and moving up, yes. Um, normally we think of new soil coming from organic matter, that is living things that have died. So a perfect example of that is leaf litter or dead leaves on the ground. I don't know if you guys can see Mr. Dutton, but again, he is showing you some, oh, that looks like inorganic material. <laughs> Is that a leaf or is that plastic? Is that leaf? I can't quite see it very well. Dead leaf? <laughs> All right. Um, so additions or inputs to a soil system, right, are materials decaying. What about organisms that cause transformation? Can you name an animal, an organism of any type that lives underground or spends most of its time underground? There are lots of choices. Did you find one? Yep, Mr. Dutton's got one. So guys, if you can see, Mr. Dutton's got a worm for you. One of the major causes of transformation in our soils are organisms that consume and digest soil for their energy, such as worms. Uh, Mr. Dutton, I don't know if you can see the chat, but Ayana has named your worm Hermit. So this is Hermit the worm. Um, certainly other organisms, right, that are down there, uh, groundhogs, voles, moles, um, and I would argue plant life and you know legumes and things like that also have an effect here. 
So all of those are causing transformations in the soil, turning one type of soil into another one. I don't know if cascaras count because I don't know what a cascara is. is. Anyways, so uh, two, two other key terms from this chapter, salinization and leaching. Salinization or saline, you may have heard of, is literally salt. Anyone who wears contacts, you use saline solution to store your contacts. Um, if you've ever been sick and you've gargled saline water or salt water uh, to help treat your, your throat. Um, but saline um, or salt, uh, all of the different salts that are in the soil can get carried around by water because they are dissolved in water. So can I interrupt for a second? Because um, I do have some very saline soil that yeah. I wanted to show off. Uh, because what I do during the winter is I put salt on my driveway in order to melt some of the, uh, in order to melt some of the ice that forms. And so I'm right next to my driveway right now. And what happens is that runoff, uh, the salty runoff ends up in the soil. And so this particular soil is not so great uh, to plant things in. And I don't know how well you can see it, but I can see all sorts of little uh, crystals reflecting um, because the salt does accumulate in this soil. Um, and I'm trying to show off a little bit of that, uh, the crystallization that happens. But um, yeah, this plant, this soil is very not productive. Uh, there's some weeds that grow, but other than that, we don't really have this um, uh, grape hyacinth. That's what this is right here. Uh, and it, this stuff can grow pretty much anywhere. So yeah, uh, salinization causes lots of problems in, with soil. In fact, um, sowing salt is a phrase uh, for uh, trying to like, for sabotaging something. So if you sow salt, it means you're putting salt in your field, which means you're not gonna be able to grow crops. So it's a phrase that, uh, probably an older phrase um, for when more people or a higher percentage of our population was farmers, but sowing salt would literally meant to sabotage something. All right. Um, so uh, salinization is when salt collects. Um, certainly we see salinization from, certainly we see salinization uh, from where we, for in, in urban areas, more from salting our roads and sidewalks and things like that. Uh, in agricultural areas, salinization is actually a product of irrigation. And irrigation is when we, uh, when they are uh, running more and more water to areas that are drier. And so if you live in a hot location that's relatively dry, that is, wait, the P is less than E? What the heck does that mean? Hmm. Well, I'm gonna guess that E stands for evaporation. So what is the opposite of evaporation? Wait, and it starts with a P, right? Yes, so I like the idea of condensation. Technically condensation is the opposite process of evaporation but it doesn't start with a P. <laughs> there we go, thank you guys. So if precipitation is less than evaporation, okay? If precipitation is less than evaporation, nice work, Ayana. Uh, what you see is capillary flow or water flow, <clears throat> especially as we irrigate, uh, water flows up from the <clears throat> water uh, is is generally moving up from the B layer, the B horizon to the A horizon, and you end up with a lot of salt in your A horizon. You end up with a lot of those nutrients that normally accumulate in the B horizon in the A horizon, and you end up with salt <laughs> collecting. And as uh, Mr. Dutton told us, right, salt means you probably can't grow. You, things will not grow there. Primary productivity is not very successful there, except for some hardy weeds. The opposite of salinization is leaching. 
So salinization means salt is coming or nutrients are coming up. Leaching is when you have a P greater than E or you have a lot of precipitation and little evaporation. So that means you have uh, flooding, right? You have a lot of water and that water is not evaporating, right? So uh, that, um, that water will flow downward and it will carry with it nutrients. And so uh, the A horizon will get leached out and all the nutrients will go into the B horizon, which if you're a tree is fine. The tree doesn't care that much, but normally agriculture in agriculture, we're growing plants for a single season. They don't have time to grow roots into the B horizon. So their root systems for most of our uh, plant products are only in the A horizon. And if we leach out the soil, if we, uh, if there's not enough evaporation and, and just a lot of um, uh, cold rain, you end up losing nutrients uh, from leaching away from the A horizon, which makes it hard to grow crops there. Okay, so why isn't all dirt the same? This is actually, and I, I know this is silly, but this is my favorite part because I don't know why, just the playing with the ratios here. So there are three types of soil that we identify, the three types of particles. There is sand, silt, and clay. Sand, we're all familiar with. Well, I hope you're familiar with. If, you have, if you're not familiar with sand, you should take a day trip to Edgewater and walk in the sand and get some sand, um, obviously while social distancing. Silt is the one people are normally the least familiar with. Uh, it is in the middle in, uh, in terms of size, in terms of the diameter, diameter of the particles. Um, Silt, you generally, it's difficult to see the particles individually um, because they are so small. Uh, because of that, it has sort of a, a slippery feel to it. So if you've ever like reached down to the bottom of a stream and grabbed a handful of the, of the soil at the bottom of the stream, it will feel slippery. Uh, and that is because uh, the, the particle size of silt, and I don't know if you guys can see Mr. Dutton, but Mr. Dutton is showing you guys some silt. It's actually almost, it's, it's uh, slippery or slimy in a, in a way that feels uh, very unlike sand, right? Sand feels granular. This will feel slippery. And finally. And might I say cold too. Oh yes, and cold. And then clay uh, is so fine. The particle size for, for clay is so fine that it actually sticks together. Um, and you end up, it, it normally, you can, you can ball up clay, uh, so, which is why it's used in arts and crafts, right? Um, so uh, clay is generally, it's so fine, the particles are so fine or so small that they actually stick together. Um, Ayana has a really good question, Mr. Dutton, um, and I imagine it depends on the plant, but I'm going to ask you, uh, how long does it usually take to get plants to the bee horizon? So how long does it take for plants to grow roots into the bee horizon? Uh, that's a great question. So uh, most plants don't even try. But most of the plants that you're uh, familiar with, vegetables and stuff like that. Um, so any annual, like a carrot that has a tap root, which is um, a main root. And if I, I'll see if I can find one. Um, this doesn't have a tap root, but you see the root system here. Uh, the main root digs way down uh, into, into the soil and you know carrots are famous for having a big old taproot. That's the thing that you actually eat. And uh, that goes way down in the soil, but at most carrots are only going eight or 10 inches down. So uh, it takes more than a year typically. Uh, and trees are really good at doing that. Trees are really good at tapping into that uh, bee horizon and getting all sorts of nutrients from that bee horizon so that they can continue pulling in nutrients for a long, long time. So you would, you would expect that it would take a couple of years uh, to establish. And that's why if you transplant a tree, you have to wait a couple of years for it to really be stable until it's going to be able to, you know, firmly take root all on its own. So it, it takes a while. Uh, in the lifespan of a tree, it's not that long, but uh, for in our lifespans, it's, it, it can be a while. 
Awesome, awesome question, Ayana. Thank you, Mr. Dutton. Um, all right. So, so how do these three things mix? And you see uh, this soil pyramid shows you that there are a wide variety of types of soil, right? But all we're really doing is mixing up clay, sand, and silt in different mixtures. Um, I actually had a student uh, several years ago who did their IA um, <laughs> by trying to make five different soils from like starting with clay, uh, starting with silt that he collected and starting with sand and mixing them together and then growing plants in them. Um, it was a beautiful disaster of an experiment. Um, but he, uh, so that, but I, so I had a student who worked with this as his IA. Um, <clears throat> so sandy soils, as you might expect, are gritty. They fall apart really easily. They drain and quickly let in air. So any of these sandy things down here, right, tend to drain water very quickly. Uh, silty soils, right, uh, feel slippery, hold together better than sand. Um, and they work really well, uh, silt works really well with clay and uh, sand. So it does, a, silt allows clay and sand to sort of mix and stay together. And then finally, clay feels very sticky. So you may note the, big, uh, the biggest section on the top, anything with like 50% clay is pretty much, we would just call that a clay soil. Um, the word that you should see popping up here, wait a second, tout, there's another word. It's not just sand, clay, and silt. The word is loam, and loam or loam soil is ideal for growing, um, for growing agriculture, uh, for growing crops, sorry, um, for agricultural use. So um, can anyone tell me what percentages, or can anyone give me an example of a percentage uh, for each one that would give us loam? And I'll just, because we're getting low on time, I'll, so this one, so right here, it looks like uh, in the range of 50% sand, right? Oh, sorry, someone has answered, excellent. Okay, so this is, and this is where it gets confusing, right? How do I read this diagram? Um, because what we have, and, and, and Ayana, this is a perfect answer, right? Exactly, this is exactly what I was hoping to get from you guys. Um, but do you notice that these percentages don't add up? So 20%, 80%, and 50%, loam can't be 150%. So how do I read this diagram, right? Which lines do I follow, right? Sorry, guys. So how do I follow a line in here? How do I get loam? Is this 20% clay? Is it 50% clay? Right? This loam mixture, and, and for the sake of time, I'm, we're not, because we're almost out of time. So uh, we're gonna skip over this uh, percentage part, but the, um, now I've confused myself. Um, loam, is going to be approximately 20% clay, approximately 40% silt, and then approximately 40% uh, sand. So 40, 40, and 20, give or take. All right. Um, I think we need to skip the collaborate board. Uh, the question here, I do want you guys just to think about, but we're not going to answer right now because we're almost out of time. Which soil has the greatest primary productivity? The reason I wanted you guys to see this question is the answer, right? The one word answer would be loam or loam soil, right? 
but there's four points here. So what the heck? What they're implying here is they want you to talk about various types of soil. And this question, right, doesn't directly state that. So it's not a very good question. It should be worded better, but it may not be when you see a test. So recognize, oh man, this is worth four points. They probably want me to talk about clay soil or silty soil or something else and at least do some comparison or do some, and I did not, uh, I should have given you a better command term. Um, this was an opportunity to do that and I failed you, I'm sorry. But normally they'll have a, com a command term in here um, such as uh, discuss the greatest, uh, the soil with the greatest primary productivity. productivity. And so in that, um, they're asking you to talk about loam and why it's so good. And the reason loam is so good is it's a mixture of all three in relatively even numbers, right? So Mr. Toe. Oh yeah, sorry. So I just wanted to mention real quick that students should be collecting their soil. I don't know, did you already talk about that? No, I haven't. And I think um, on Tuesday, there's a few, there's about four or five slides left. So um, let's plan, can we start Tuesday by just go, wrapping those up real quick? Yes, sir. So let's, real quick, I wanna stop here guys with the Collaborate board because I do wanna pull up, um, maybe if I can get out of full screen. Buttons are hard. It's hard to push the right buttons. I've got it up if you want me to show you. Oh, I just pulled it up. Well, either way. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So what we want you guys to take a look at, guys, uh, is, is assignment 162. So this next lab that you guys are going to be doing at home requires you to collect some of your own soil. Um, or do you have the slides up already, Mr. Dunn? Yep. Yeah, since you have to take over in two minutes anyways, why don't we go ahead and give you back the host so I don't have to load it, load the slides. Okay, so here you can see what the end goal of the project is. Um, that what I want you to do is to collect three different soil samples and you are going to eventually be able to determine how much clay, silt, and sand is in the soil and then determine the overall soil texture. So it's important that you collect some soil um, and you can even follow these instructions. You can do this, <coughs> excuse me, you can do uh, these instructions today, you can do these instructions tomorrow. Um, but in order to have data that you can analyze on Friday, you need to have um, at least one soil sample. You can use two of mine, two of someone else's. But uh, my goal is to get everyone to get one soil sample. And this slideshow walks you through how to actually perform this experiment. Uh, pictures from what I did. But this is the end goal. Any questions about that? I know we're running out of time. How many different kinds of soil do we need? Uh, if you can find three, that's ideal. If okay. you can find one, that's totally fine. Okay. Uh, uh, Go ahead. Yeah, the slides provide a step-by-step -step to get to the end result. Yep. All right. I'm all set, Mr. Tao. All right, thank you, Mr. Dutton. That was fun. Yeah, and I'll have more to show off tomorrow as we finish up. Perfect. Awesome, thank you so much, Mr. Tao. Oh, my pleasure, that was fun. Thank you guys, thank you everyone for being here. So good to see y'all. Stay healthy, stay safe, and if you're in my computer science class, stay on. Hmm.